What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase taking a return look at Fair Winter's Helm and how the recent buff has made them incredibly viable to use with stasis and as a whole. Now, at the beginning of the season of Splicer, Bungie made a few changes to how some of the exotics and perks worked in game, and one of those adjustments was allowing Fair Winter's Helm, Assassin's Cow, and Severance Enclosure to be used with stasis and also allow them to trigger their effects on the bodies of the enemies rather than yours. This has made them 100% more viable than ever before because of how strict they were to activate them and how they can also be triggered on your body alone. So with these changes now, I want to show you how much better they are now than ever before and how you can create a very oppressive setup using stasis to not only slow and freeze everyone on a wide scale, but also debuff them for an extra good measure and also stun them as well. These effects can come in small or wide depending on what tier enemy you defeat, but this major improvement shows potential to be used in endgame environments for slowing down champions or enemies in general. Raids for example in certain areas will allow this build to shine not only for you but also your team as a whole. Basically, you're going to be debuffing everyone you face, but you'll love it, I promise. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. The subclass we'll be going for is the Shade Binder for the two aspects it offers, which are Ice Flare Bolts, which allows Seekers to appear and track multiple enemies, and Glacial Harvest that will reward us Stasis Shards that will regenerate our melee energy over time. I did cover this area of use in my last video based around the Cryophysia Sidearm, but we aren't using it this time round, so some things have been changed to fit the theme. For us to make the full use of Fair Winters with Stasis, we will need to focus as much of our abilities around creating shards that will feed back into our melee as many times as we like. The Penumbral Blast ability has quite a bit of range to it that can either freeze or outright kill an enemy depending on health. As the ability falls in the power melee category, we can use this to trigger Fair Winters Helm perk over and over again with a guaranteed chance of it happening if done on a minor enemy. Now within its base form, it worked as intended and gives me the ability energy I need to refill my melee again, however, the amount I gain is very small and requires multiple shards to get a full refill back. This season, we can get a new fragment called Whisper of Hunger that drastically increases the amount of melee energy we get back from picking up a single shard. This fragment changes it from needing 10 shards for a full refill to only needing 5 instead as an incredibly useful if you want to make the fullness out of it. You can still use the build without it, but you will need to invest in your strength stat quite a bit just to balance it out. With the activation of our exotic completed, it leaves us with filling in the leftover blank for your fragments, and I recommend you go for the following, Whisper of Shards for a boost in grenade recharge rate, Whispers of Fissures for an increasement in frozen damage, and Whispers of Hedrons for a weapon boost which will heavily affect the amount of damage we do against certain enemies. These here will help boost your effectiveness on the field a bit more than normal when using stasis, and these will play a role when you come around to using your abilities at max. Of course, you can change them to fit your playstyle whenever you like. For weapons, we will be running with an AR and a grenade launcher combo for a quick and fast TDK on enemies and easier freeze and shatter method on them. The only weapon to really focus on the most is your grenade launcher, which you will be relying on a lot. Your primary and heavy aren't locked to a specific route and can be mixed and matched to your liking, but I will explain my choices. With my primary, the Chroma Rush with Feeding Frenzy and Wellspring, this will be working alongside my class abilities by constantly updating and boosting my abilities that are either out of energy completely or bit by bit. The reason I chose not to use something like Monte Carlo is because from testing, the Hunger Fragment and Glacier Harvest aspect are enough for me to build up a full melee energy again in seconds, without the use of Exotic's design around this aspect. Don't get me wrong, if you don't have the aspects or fragments that I have, then I recommend you do go for the Monte Carlo, as it works as a great alternative. Alongside this, I'm also using the heavy handed mod for extra melee energy every time I use my powered melee, and from this, the amount I'm getting back is enough to keep me afloat from start to finish. This here means that I can use whatever weapons I want and still not be at a disadvantage, which is why I chose the AR, as the weapon is fantastic, fast, lethal, and the extra add-on from the wellspring can go a long way. 
For our secondary, I'm using a truth teller with implosion bounce, fill prep and demolitionist. And like I mentioned in my previous videos, I will be using my grenade launcher as a shattered method when I'm at distance or against a large group of enemies at once. Since we lack a normal method of shatter compared to what hunters and titans have, we will have to think outside the box. Grenade launchers with their large damage and blast radius are the perfect match to fit any stasis build if you're going to take out an enemy from medium to long distance. With this thought, I also decided to put some points into my discipline stat as well via the demolitions part to gain more grenades and energy as I go, which will allow me to use my grenades more frequently and create shards in the process. This pretty much creates a feedback loop that will help rejuvenate our abilities without outside help. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Deathbringer Exotic Rocket Launcher for the big damage phases that will come through. There isn't a needed heavy for the build to make it work out really well for you, considering that we have everything in terms of damage and abilities already covered. As of now, a new catalyst has been released that makes the exotic perk activate a lot more faster, which means you can gain a bigger damage boost within a short time. While using my build, I can use my rocket launcher every now and then to increase the max damage my frozen targets receive via stasis and rockets, which will come in handy when up against ultras that appear on the map and are tankier than what we usually face. And for the stats, we have a very stat level across the build that will all have an effect on the user in some way or form. Luckily, some of these areas don't need to be so high up because of the effects of the fragments and aspects in play. Luckily, some of these areas don't need to be so high up because of the effects of the fragments and aspects in play, but I would always consider building this area up to a relative level just for precaution. So firstly, the build will be using grenades and melee quite a lot, so for this we want to aim for a 60 to 70 for a 51 to 45 second cooldown. Your grenades will be coming in handy for creating shards for your melee, so this will be a priority to level it up as best as you can. With Whispers of Shards, we can increase our grenade regen per enemy killed by Stasis and will naturally be boosting this stat all the way up to the end of the mission. Along with this, we'll be using the Demolitions part to actively not only shatter frozen targets, but also quickly build the section back up as well. It's important we keep this area filled as much as we can, as with the Dust Field or Glacial Grenades, we can easily produce shards to refill our melee from 0 to 100 whenever we like. With the grenades comes the melee, and this area, although slightly lower than what the grenades offer, is actually packing quite a bit of buffs coming its way. We have Radiant Light that will provide a plus 20 to our strength stats, Heavy Handed that will refill half our melee energy, Glacial Harvest for the shards, and Wisp of Hunger that increases the amount of melee energy we get via Glacial Harvest. So as you can see, this area is practically covered in instant melee energy in return. If you have this same thing as I do, then you don't actually need to worry so much about investing in the melee section at all. We then have our leftover stats which covers recovery at 50, resilience at 60, mobility at 30, and intellect at 60. Out of the 4, it's best you focus your points into intellect as you'll be using your super on and off, and the rest of the stats will always be on a safe level when you're entering any type of content. If you follow what I have and feel that your melee stat is already at a good level, then I recommend you reduce your melee stat a bit more and pump some points into your super instead. Doing so will allow you to activate the Radiant Light secondary perk that grants everyone and yourself to become charged with light, which I believe will be greatly benefited by everyone. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall role of the build. For head, we have strength and hands-on mod. Arm, we have Recovery and Radiant Light mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener Times 2, and Elemental Light mod. Leg, we have Mind Discipline, Invigoration Times 2, and Heavy Handed mod. Bond, we have Strength, Distribution, and Taking Charge mod. Now, here's the deal when using the build. You will gain a large buff to your side in terms of the oppressive effects that you're pulling out onto others, and the effects are huge and long lasting and can easily make tough content pretty much trivial. A Fair Winter's Helm is generally a really good exotic to pair for those that want an exotic whose effects can be used across all subclasses with no downsides to them. They offer users a 30% debuff on all enemies affected within their blast range and can also stun them until the effect wears off. This can be very destructive when you look into it further depending on the enemy type you face, as the larger and tougher the enemy is, the larger the effects will spread to the point that you can easily cover a whole boss arena and debuff everyone within it within just one melee effect. 
Sadly, when the Exotic was first introduced, its effects only worked off of your body only. So, not a lot of players decided to use it because of the risk factor involved, even though the pros outweigh the cons. This unexpected buff to them has now made them very lethal to use, especially with stasis added to the mix, as you can pretty much make every enemy miserable. To give you an idea, against regular groups of minor and major enemies, we are debuffing them all for 30%, which they will be briefly stunned as well. They will be also frozen and able to move until the stasis effects disappear. Once one of them is killed, Whisper of Shards will activate and give me a boost in grenade recharge rate. Whisper's officials will increase the shatter damage done to others for a increase in frozen damage. And Whispers of Hedrons will activate and provide you with a weapon boost which you can then use with your rocket launcher or your other weapons. On top of all this, we will be swimming in shards and can repeat the process as many times as you like. I personally believe to get the fullness of the build, playing certain endgame content that offers a challenge to you is where you're going to get the most out of it. Grandmasters, for example, is where I can see the build shining the most in with how slow but brutal the missions can be with most teams. The great thing about playing Grandmasters is how everyone plays a certain role in the mode and how builds are heavily recommended for the best survival for everyone. Last season, I witnessed a lot of players using stasis to get around and freeze enemies' movements with great effects. I believe this build here can shine in the season endgame mission as well and can greatly benefit the team with the added on debuffs that will shortly make taking on champions even more of a breeze. Think about it, you're going to be going slow and taking your time to pick off enemies one by one, but you're also going to get enemies that will charge at you or you'll end up in a situation to where you need to use CQC. As long as you use your penumbra blast well and know when to activate it in the right time, you can save a team in many encounters. If you wish to add even more chaos to mix, adding in the new Breach and Clear mod can easily make this a stupidly OP build with no limits to it. Overall, Fairwinter's Helm is now a viable exotic that you can bring anywhere you like and generally be known as the debuffing your team. Raid, Nightfall, Strikes and even PvP can allow the build to have a place to do what it does best and its effects can be applied over and over again. Now once you do get a taste of the build, you'll surely want to see what Severance and Assassin's Cow can offer and I highly recommend you do give them a try now with Stasis just to see how good they are. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall lore content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.